Yes, look at what I picked up. Battlefield 1. Awesome, isn't it? This is cool because they take and simplify everything now to how it originally should be. Because I used to play a lot of Battlefield 2 infantry only servers. So this is like bringing me back to the good old days after I took down the servers of Battlefield 2. But in the Battlefield 1, I technically gave before. You know, it's just released like yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. Uh, when I'm picking up. Well, okay, the early Illustrator Edition was released a couple days before. But we're going to have to deal with that because that costs more money. And I'm all about saving money, so I spent $60 on a video game. Wow. I uh, have nothing else to do about my money. <laughs> I can get my girlfriend. I mean, I can buy her girlfriend. I mean, oh, wait, hang on. <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> that's slavery. Um, yeah, so it's actually, I, I don't like it. I didn't think I was going to like it. I wasn't planning on getting it, but my boss wanted to play it. And uh, online, I was like, yeah, I'll buy it. You know, and then uh, he fried his PlayStation. So I haven't been able to play it online with him. But just the, the multiplayer, I didn't even finish the single player. Normally, I'm one for just finishing single player, but I just... I played a little bit of single player because the servers were down. <laughs> they was. They was down. Uh, but still, I played a little bit of single player. Popped into multiplayer. I'm like, yeah, this is this is kind of awesome. There's no kill streaks, no UAVs. If you want to spot an enemy, you have to physically see them and spot them for the other guys. And it only stays on your screen for a couple seconds. Or on your radar, I mean. Um, it is like bringing first-person shooters multiplayer back down to earth, back down to... In my opinion, like where it should be. There's no crazy like you know kill streaks, all these weird power ups and stuff, UAVs, grenade launchers and stuff. It's pretty simple, just soldier on soldier. The vehicles are even simplified. I feel like where you don't have like a million vehicles everywhere, and the vehicles seem semi underpowered. So that's cool. It's really focusing on the infantry aspect of it, and that I, I love that. And plus with giant maps, oh my god! And to the uh, the blips. Let's talk about the blimps for a second here. Or the Zeppelin. Sorry, I'm gonna use the official term. When a Zeppelin flies in, if it is on your team, that is cool. If it is on the enemy team, it is awesome. Now, I know having a giant behemoth thing in the sky shooting down at you might seem like a disadvantage, but it adds to the epicness of the battlefield. No pun intended, or no joke intended, battlefield, huh? Um, it adds to the epicness when you have this blimp firing down, raining down hellfire on you. Oh, I didn't get the hellfighter pack. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I didn't pre order. That's right. Um, when they're raining down, just fire from above, and then when you finally take that thing down, oh my god, that is one of the most awesome things I've ever seen in a video game. That bloop just comes cr- Zeppelin, sorry, sorry, Hindenburg. <laughs> comes crashing down onto the arena, flames everywhere, you see people just jumping off and parachuting left and right, it is awesome. Yes, it is. You want to know what else was awesome? The day before Battlefield came out, I finished Metal Gear Solid 4 for the first time. The first time. I hadn't played it, even though it came out in 2008, I never played it before then. And I had seen clips of of the ending, and I'm like, I know how it ends. And spoiler alert, Snake dies, he shoots himself. So I'm I'm watching the ending, you know, me and my brother are watching it, and um, it got to the end and Snake shot himself. And I'm like, I've seen a clip where he's talking to Big Boss. That hasn't played yet. What did I miss? And then the credits start rolling, and I'm like, I missed something. I'm like, he's got to be here somewhere. I'm like, let me look in the credits for Big Boss name. The credits are scrolling, then they go, it turns black, and one more name comes up. Big Boss, voiced by a camera who voiced him. It's not David Hayter. He did solid. He did old snake. Um, and he comes up, and I'm like, okay, now this is interesting because I had spoiled the ending for myself, and then I, I just, I got completely surprised by the end. And then the way it ended, I was like, oh my God. This, the Metal Gear Solid has the best, the best story as far as the video game goes in the world. Oh my god. The story of Metal Gear Solid is just nothing can top it. It is so good. And I never, I'm, I'm like fangirling out over here. I don't know, every time I grow he fangirls out about um, like Attack on Titan and all that stuff. Um, but the story of Metal Gear Solid, if I was to have a top 10 game list, Metal Gear Solid would be in there, and I would not be a specific game, it would be Metal Gear Solid, probably this game, uh, and 5, and, you know, fan pain, you know, all that stuff, but, um, Metal Gear Solid is just so awesome, the story, nothing can top it. Anyway, don't know how I got that, but, oh yeah, and after that, I, uh, well, I had, I had something, wine, the Federalist, I figured that would fit with, what is it, empty? Well, <laughs> oh god. <coughs> so happens when you uh, leave wine sit out with no cap on it for three days. Oh, that's rank. <laughs> what is? <coughs> mm. Uh, mm. Wow. The wine 
itself wasn't bad. The second day seemed better. I lost the cap. So. What a court to me. Ugh. Wow. <laughs> mm. That was... <laughs> it wasn't straight vinegar, but that almost tasted like vinegar. Ugh. But yeah, I figured the Federalist would kind of fit in with the Metal Gear Solid, uh... Metal Gear Solid theme, you know, with the, the Patriots and all that stuff. And then after I, uh, like, drank down, it was probably, like, I don't know, I think the other, like, down to there. And, like, one signal was like, oh, God, that's another line. But, uh, it didn't really affect me that that much, because I'm used to drinking 40% ABV. ABV? Mm -hmm. <laughs> ABV. And, uh, yeah, so it didn't affect me too much. And then I binge watch over the garden wall. For unknown reasons. Well, my brother recommended it to me. And, uh, it's actually good. Surprisingly. I thought it was going to be horrible. But he, uh, he bought a copy out of Myers and was like, hey, you know, it's interesting. I was like, well, don't, I knew nothing about it. It was like the only, the only thing in recent memory that I have not spoiled anything about. It. I'm like, I saw one clip and it was the beginning of, uh, School Town Folly. So it was just some singing a little bit. And I didn't see, I didn't see nothing else from it. And I just binge watch it with like half a bottle of wine in my system. Well, it was actually pretty good. So, anyway. Now that everybody's tuned off the video, which is good, because, you know, we have to top my, uh, my transgressions from before. So, if anybody knows my YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, mm, yummy. And my YouTube channel, my first video that I uploaded was of the Bradley Camara 2 Butterfly Knife. Guess I'm fondling in my hand. No. Not what you think. Um, <laughs> I probably got a bunch of 13 year old kids just watching this and laughing like crazy. Because that's all that they do. Like a bunch of little teenagers and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa funny joke. And, you know, uh, some guy in my uh, knife collection video was like, oh, I like that. That's what she said, joke. And I'm like, really? 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 Dude? Come on, come on, get this seriously. Anyway, in my knife collection video, a lot of people offered to buy this from me. And so, yeah, my first video on YouTube, Brandon Kamara 2 Butterfly Knife. I hate to do this heck, but we're getting back on track. Better Kamara 2 Butterfly Knife. And people offered to buy this from me in my knife collection video. The answer is no. Because to my knowledge, well, not to my knowledge, I know these are not being made anymore. And it is, for me, kind of a collector's item. I don't really carry it. I think it's cool, but butterfly knives are extre they have extreme downfalls that there's no way around it. No matter how much you try to argue how good a butterfly knife is, they have downfalls that are just inexcusable excuse me took me a second to figure out the word big word inexcusable inexcusable five syllables that's hard anything over two syllables is difficult difficult see three syllables that was difficult for me to say <laughs> i'm a simple-minded little worm a worm but so people offered to buy this for me i bought it for 80 it was like my first folding knife because i had a fixed blade i started carrying around when i turned like 16 like it's probably a bad idea so i went like with the next next like People for anything, a butterfly knife? Wow, I was retarded. And I finally got into folders, which are a little more people friendly, and I kind of went down to small stuff. Well, okay, what I got on me right now is not technically small, it's black and scary and tactical. It's big and black, that's right, big and black. Not like me. I'm, I'm tiny and white. <laughs> laugh, laugh, just keep laughing. <laughs> I don't care. White, tiny, white. Look at it, matching my shirt. Oh, yeah, look, camel pants for the win. Yeah. <laughs> You didn't even know that. You said you did. You know now. You know now. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, yeah, people have to buy this for me. I was eighty bucks. Oh yeah, it is probably worth like two hundred bucks now. I don't know for a fact, but that's probably what I charge for shipping. <laughs> it, it, it's I'm, I'm not I'm not selling it. So if anybody on the com in the comments wants to ask if I'm selling it, no, maybe eventually I will, but I'll tell you if I am. I'm not. Don't ask me. I will come to you and offer it. You don't just break into someone's house and be like, can I have this? No, you cannot. If it's out in the trash, you can have it. If it's out in the trash, girl, you can have it. I can't, I can't even get it like a black girl, but if, yeah. <laughs> that's racist now. I'm, I'm so racist. Let's, all right, let's, I'm going to show you this before I get in trouble because YouTube is going to demonetize everything. Okay, and see here, here we got, we'll get to the knife in a second, but here's the interesting thing about when you drink wine, you leave it in the, the glass, it kind of starts looking like a little bit of a Petri dish down there, so, uh, yeah, anyway, so, we got a knife, a Bradley Camara 2, the 2, not 1, 
I wanted the three, I think it was. The one with the, um, Tanto. Bled. The BLD. Bled. Belady. Belady. Do you even watch Tulsa? Bro! Bro, look at my thumbnail. Ooh, cool, isn't it? <laughs> you can tell I ADD. And I'm not drunk. And my coffee is already out of my system. This is how I am. This is. Oh, there's a speck of dust. Yay. Anyway, so, here's an eye. It has a very sleek design. I want to mention made model 42. But the 42s, when I was getting this, was kind of hard to find. And, uh, this was recommended as a good knife because it has torques on the pivots. Because that's what you want. You don't want a butterfly knife that's been pinned together. If you get a butterfly knife that's been pinned together after using it for just like five seconds, it's going to fly apart on you. And then you're going to regret your purchase. Even though it was only 10 bucks, you're going to go buy another one. And now it's going to fly apart on you. And by the time you buy 10 of those things, you could have bought one of these. So save your money and get a good butterfly knife if you want one. Okay? So, you got your meal out handles, which you will be able to see this. Most of the time, I'm like, you will not be able to see this, but you will be able to see this, even if I'm lying through my nose. You see how they're milled out, and they are actually, they're not just round holes, they are contoured. So they're not sharp, so they're nice and smooth. That's right, just smooth. Just, just stroke it. So, on the back, you have your Torx Strat layers and layers to hold your handle to guitar, because it's pillow construction, so you can blow the dust out. We are just full of innuendos today, ain't we? <laughs> we am not like this. Ah, and we got pins on the front, which I would be afraid of those pins coming out. However, this is a very hot quality product, so I'm not too afraid of it coming out. I did have somebody comment on my voice, like how when I started talking about, I can't remember what it was, but like my voice went like full retard. That's just how I talk. Deal with it or get out. So your latch is actually reversible. So, if you want to, you can put it on the other side. It is not a spring latch. See? That's probably like that. It's just, eh. See? It's not spring. It's just free, free latching. Free latching, I guess. But uh, it does a good job of holding it in place. It is a squared off latch. Square. That's right, Sean. We're talking about Sean Connery, boys. Because I got, uh, what Bond movie is that up there? Uh, you only have twice playing upstairs, so, you know. I got to talk like Sean Connery. Even though he's probably my least favorite James Bond. If anybody was interested in who my favorite James Bond would be, it would be Daniel Craig, and it would be Timothy Dalton. Those are my two favorite James Bonds. But we're not talking about James Bond right now. Actually, we are. We're talking about a butterfly knife. So. Oh, and about the legality of these things. Fixed plates are more dangerous. Okay, that's basically all you have to say. But Michigan's laws, they are not illegal. I... To, from the, to my knowledge, okay, I've, I've looked into the laws, and I've not found that they are illegal, but I would not carry this. I sort of did, but just for a short time, a long time ago. The reason, I mean, not reason, but the reason for not carrying it is because they are extremely, extremely hard to deploy. You have to have a lot of dexterity to deploy these things. Okay? And I'm not talking about when you're going to go stab someone. I'm talking about you need a knife out. You need a lot of thought to go into pulling that knife out. Now, what if you're in a car and it, you just drove into the river or your passenger in a car that drove into the river and you're sinking and you have to cut your seatbelt? The last thing you want to pull out is a butterfly knife. <laughs> I wouldn't even want to pull out a folder. I'd want myself to have a rescue hook right on my seatbelt. Wish they do make those. Invest in one. I have, but I, I should. So, you don't want to be fumbling with this thing because there is a ton, there are so many chances of you hurting yourself. That is why automatic knives are the best type of knife to deploy because there is no in-between stage with the blade. Let me give you all an example. This is close enough. Oh, hang on a second. This isn't going to work. I got to bring my camera back. My camera work is so bad. It makes little children cry. My little children, I mean grown adults, it's that bad. So, this is a stand-in for an automatic knife because it kind of works the same way. It's a spring assist, okay? It's not an automatic for all you idiots. The blade is either closed or as soon as you start popping out, it is open. All right? There is no... In and now, this is obviously spring tension, but if it wasn't under spring tension, it could stay like this. There is no in-between stage. It is either closed or it is open. There's not that in-between stage, and when it's, well, see, there, just because of the spring, okay? But you get my point. 
There is no in-between stage where the blade is not locked, either closed or open. Therefore, automatic knives are safer. This knife, you have two handles. <laughs> the blade is completely, you can just flop everywhere. Okay? So, oh, and you're probably wondering, like, does this flip good? And the answer is yes, it does flip good. However, I am not good at flipping it. For the reason that when I first got it, I was being a dumb ass with it, and I cut my finger really bad. And this is annoying, and this is amusing to do on the camera because there's like a delay. Dun, 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 dun. I'm seeing a delay from like when I'm actually hitting my finger and like this, yeah, anyway. You can tell I ADD so bad. So when I first got this, I did a flip of it, and I believe it was my right index finger, and I stabbed right there, right there, with the tip. This tip is sharp. It is sharp. It is very, very sharp, and I can still feel what it felt like. By the way, the blade shape is awesome. It looks like, um, what's his name, sword from What's-Its-Face, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, which I have not watched the whole way through. I have not watched Star Wars, I have not watched Harry Potter, I have not watched The Matrix. There's a lot of stuff I have not done or watched. And I love telling people that because they freak the hell out. So, on the blade, it is very simple. It says Bradley Cutlery, Cutlery Co. Cutlery Co. Cutlery Co. Which I believe Bradley is out of business. And something tells me that Kershaw made these for Bradley. The blade is fairly sterile. Like I probably am, but I wouldn't know because I haven't had a chance to find out if I am or not. It is very sterile. It has just that. That's the only markings on it. I cannot remember the exact steel on the blade. However, it's not important because you're really not getting this for a utility knife. Okay. You're now you're actually going to use it is for a fun showpiece. See, there you go. The knife looks, oh yeah, and it can lock open, which is very important for a butterfly knife. If you're going to be using it for hard work, which I would not recommend. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm, mm. The weapon's awesome, isn't it? <clears throat> mm. Wow. So, it is a very sleek looking knife. It looks cool and awesome. Very symmetrical, which I like symmetrical stuff because I'm ADD as hell. Um, squared off design, which I like. I like the squared off design. Fits nice in your hand. Got some pretty, pretty good grip. Those holes give you a little bit of grip. So when you want to go rough and hard. <laughs> Funny. Laugh. Please laugh. I need the laughs. So, now, the all important question that I was going to ask, but I can't remember what the question I was going to ask, but should you buy this? Not for me. If you find one of these for sale, I would recommend picking it up because they are rare now. I haven't looked for it recently, but oh yeah, check out, I'm going to ADD again here. It's hard to do this behind camera. Look at the thickness of that blade. That is a nice, th that's a nice thickness right there. Honey, honey, man. So, if you find one of these for sale, I would recommend picking it up because they're kind of rare. Like I said, I haven't looked for them recently, but uh, I would pick it up, definitely. Definitely as a collector's item. If you want a good flipper, this would be a good flipper. Like I said, I've not flipped it that much, per se, but it is feels fairly weighted good, at least from my limited knowledge of butterfly knives. And, it, and because of Torx construction and it's stainless steel sandwich design, it'll you'll be able to keep up on the maintenance. And uh, oh, and here's the other thing I forgot. <laughs> I am editing. In. Normally you have some handle wiggle here. Hang on one second. Very minimal, but enough so that the blade isn't stiff. See, look at that. Barely anything. Maybe like an eighth of an inch at the most, if that. I mean, it is. It's very tight tolerances. So, a very good knife, and buy it if you can find it. <laughs> I got you stand up right this time. So, I don't want to sound like a jerk saying this again, but don't offer to buy this from me. The answer will be no. I probably won't even respond back to your comments. Yes, I appreciate your view and your, your support to my channel, but if I want to sell it, I'll come to you guys, you guys, or gals, and say I'm selling it. Right now, I don't need money, and I am a hoarder. Not a whore, a hoarder. I can cry a whore for the cruel world. Forgive me, I have a two faces, one for the world. What for God save me? Yeah, um, I like to hoard stuff. I have a case full of knives. 
I rarely carry or use most of them, but it's because I'm I'm not a collector, but I hoard stuff. I got like lots of stuff that I hoard, like gee whiz, I don't know, like video games I have not even played yet. Where do I, oh I was like, where did remaster of Last of Us go? I'm like, I know I have it in here somewhere. <laughs> I'm like, remaster of Last of Us because it, it was in the store. Anyway, um, so and like I said, I don't I don't I I I I I, I don't want to sound rude saying that, but. People are just going to be like, oh, can I buy that from you? No. 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 I'm sorry. They make a lot of butterfly knives now that are good. I don't have much experience with a lot of butterfly knives because after this, I was like, the butterfly knives aren't really for me, but I like it as a collector's piece. Piece. One piece. None piece. Yeah. I like it as a collector's aspect of it, but as far as actually using it, eh, and it's not just this knife, it's butterfly knives just in general. They're not. They're not. No, no. They're not good. They're good, but not really good for using. I mean, if you're going to be flipping it, yeah. But no. I mean, yes, no. But anyway, so I just want to reiterate that. And you can go on a lot of... Like, let me give a free plug to, like, Blade HQ and Blade Ops. And those are the two main ones I know that would... Your best chance to find a butterfly knife um, would probably be there. And Benchmade makes some now. They're expensive. That's the thing. Butterfly knives are expensive. But if I was to sell you this, it would be more. I guarantee more than, like, one of the new Benchmade 62s. I think it's a 62. They're like, I think almost $300, but I charge more than that for this. So you'd be, you'd be getting a better deal if you buy a brand new Benchmade. So buy the brand new Benchmade. Tell me how much you love it and you sleep of it. You know, some people probably do that with their knives. I don't. I should. It she doesn't sound like a bad idea. Hmm. I don't know. Might give it a try sometime. Did you? I need leather gloves. These are work gloves. They're not leather. Leather. Leather, leather gloves. Mmm. Tasty. Hello, YouTube lights. YouTube lights. It's me, Mr. Man, here coming at you again. Because why not? Because it's my last day off before I gotta go back to my shop. I mean, my fun job. Hold the phone. I'll put this right up between my legs. That's right, son. Get my gloves out. Oh, God, that's heavy. Shove them right up into my rear. Dear Lord. I, I gotta make one worse than that, because, you know, this is, that's how I roll. Um, but before we do that, I gotta talk about some stuff, okay? Because I always does this. I always, always does this. No, I don't. Hmm. How was I gonna start this off? <laughs> Hang on. Well, there's my shadow. I can say hi to it. That's the only thing I'm ever gonna say hi to in my life, probably. Wait, I'm losing it. There we go. Look at my shadow. Oh, I look like the guy from the Saboteur with that hat, and I'll take it off. My neighbors have got to think that I am a complete and utter idiot, which they'd be right. They would be right. But luckily they don't tell me to my face, because that would hurt. Maybe. I just hated these so bad, I can't remember what I was coming out here to do. Hmm. I was just thinking, <laughs> it would have been funny. I just ran in my backyard and it's viewable from the street. I thought it'd be funny. I come running out of force with uh, my rifle and the cops drive by right then. So they're like, oh my God, <laughs> that would have uh, that would have been awesome. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder how I'm still alive. Or not. <laughs> yes, I've been trying to enjoy the last like couple hours of my life, my 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 my, my couple of hours of um the rest of my day off because um you know I gotta go back to work tomorrow, so that's fun. Um, this is horrible. I can't start this.